Go, 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 all the time. Good job, girl. I'm Shanae Green. I'm a DSP for the Elmwood Home here in Chester. Um, this is a very fulfilling job for me, um, taking care of people. You know, it's, it's a different feeling. Uh, you really, you know, you feel like you're helping the world. This is a beautiful place to be. Mm -hmm. I, I like work. I work in there because I make money and like, it's a lot of fun. Because I like things that I want to do that, if you see I want to do some work, I can do it myself. Good morning, Register Chapel. We'll come again today. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we have come to serve. And Father, we come to serve you by serving others. Allow the spirit of your holiness, O oh God, to grant the words in which will be spoken to serve our hearts that we may be better servants for you. Take our hand, guide us and direct us that we may guide and direct others closer, that they may have a closer walk with you. Now allow the spirit of your holiness to bless us this day. In Jesus we pray, amen. Well, good morning, church. You uh, are currently staring at my bathroom sink. <laughs> I promise there is a reason. My name is Carrie Church, and I am blessed and privileged to serve as the Children and Youth Ministry Leader at Register Chapel. We're so happy you're with us this morning. And this morning, I sort of wanted to show you something I've been thinking about lately, which is this concept of abundance. So I want you to tell me what you think abundance looks like. So I brought this glass with me, and you tell me. What is an abundant amount of water? Is that an abundant amount? Well, we've still got some space, so let's see. Well, let's see if we can get it all the way up to the top. Okay, right at the top, is that an abundant amount? You see, I asked this question because Jesus said that he came to give us life 
and to give us life abundantly. And when I think of abundance, I don't think that he just came to fill our lives to the brim. He came to fill us so that we are, in fact, overflowing, so that what he has given us pours out onto the people around us. And that, to me, is abundance. Pray with me. Father God, we thank you so much for this day, for this time that we get to spend together. Father, I thank you for these young men and women that are watching this from home. I pray that they are enjoying this glorious day that you have given, Lord. This is the day that you have made. And we praise you that you came not only that we might have life, but that we might have life in abundance. Father, let us cling to that promise today. In the precious name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hear the word of God. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from Mark, the first chapter, the 29th through the 39th verses. From the New International Version. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed sick with a fever, and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went in and took her by the hand and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to serve and wait on them. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and the demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door. And Jesus healed many who had various diseases, and he also drove out many demons. But he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up and he left the house, and he went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him. And when they found him, they exclaimed, everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages so that I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. The word of God for the people of God.
she began to serve. Have you ever been sick on your bed of affliction, not wanting to be disturbed, or in a mood maybe, wanting to be in a solitary place, call yourself resting and getting away from everything? Really those feelings come when we really don't feel like being messed with. Headaches, upset stomach. It says here in the scripture that this woman whose name is not given, but we know she's Simon's and Andrew, she's Simon's mother-in-law, Andrew's brother's wife, Simon, later becomes known as Peter. His mother-in-law is sick with a fever. I hope and pray she did not have COVID. But yet at the same time, in the midst of her illness, men invited a whole group or a crowd to her house. Can you imagine someone inviting someone to your home when you're not feeling well? Maybe that has happened to you. The company shows up, you're in bed and your PJs and you're feeling bad then something else different happens. This whole scene takes place after church, after leaving the synagogue. Jesus and his entourage goes to Simon's mother's house after church dinners. Remember them? They seem so far in the distance now. But the uninvited guests come in and mother-in-law is ill. So enough, we know that. Now, Jesus, after being told that Simon's mother-in-law is ill, goes into her room. Not only is it enough that the guest comes uninvitedly, but now the intrusion because Jesus goes into the mother-in-law's room. Maybe she knew him, but still it seemed to be quite of an intrusion. Maybe some of us know Jesus, but when he comes into our space where we are, it seems to be an intrusion. Lord, I left you at church. Now you have come into my room, into my space. Songwriter, though, says it this way, precious Lord, take my hand. And it's here where Jesus takes her hand and she's able to get up and to serve. She begins to serve. I don't know about you, but when Jesus come and has come in or came into my life, I too did not want to be disturbed. I was satisfied in my own little world, my own little condition. Maybe I didn't realize how sick I was, how ill my thought patterns and my behavior, how strange they were, laying on my sinful bed of affliction, not even realizing my condition. The fever may have been that, in a sense, for some of us, anger. The fever may have been, for others of us, greed or selfishness. The fever could have been any sinful disease, that of lust, of that of hatred, malice. The, the fever could be that of jealousy. But Jesus came in and he intrudes. He comes in and he will take your hand. And when he takes your hand, we ought to have the sense of gratitude. She began to serve. I don't know what motivated her, but feeling good, and I can imagine that knowing that it was after synagogue, after church, now she could get up and she could serve others. This is a Sunday of service. We praise God for all of those of you who are here at Register Chapel and elsewhere where you serve. 
where you praise God and bless God so that others can feel the spirit of God and see God in your service. Yes, the faith is necessary to serve with the hope and the understanding that as you serve, you draw others to Christ. We serve. She served. She began to serve. How will you begin to serve when Jesus comes into your room and when Jesus invites himself into your solitary space? He takes your hand. Will you serve? The other Sunday we talked about Jonah running the other way, but God had a way of moving him to serve. Some of us even serve like Jonah reluctantly. And other Sunday before that, we talked about, in a sense, of those who had an idea of service but really didn't know how to serve. But God calls us all into service to worship him so that others may see him in us, to serve our community, to serve our families, to serve our group as church, as we call it, to serve. Then, as she began to serve, she finds herself serving maybe out of gratitude. I'm so glad that I'm well. I can get up and I can serve. Maybe she's serving out of duty. This is my responsibility, and this is what I do. I do this in service for the Lord. Maybe she's serving even out of obligation, feeling that now I've been blessed, so I'm obligated to help. But the deepest and the greatest service comes with love. You know, when you serve out of love and you give out of love and the energy comes because you love. This is how Christ serves. He served us by giving of himself as being served up on the cross out of love for us. John echoes this in a sense from Mark's illustration here of service. And John says it in the verses we know so well, God so loved that he gave his only begotten son. See that giving of the service of Christ the service of Christ as he went somewhere to pray, the service of Christ as he cast out our demons, the service of Christ as he shares his love, as he died for us on a cross. And then not only did he die, but he served in his resurrection. And he serves by allowing us to be resurrected people that we may serve in a dying world. This is a service Sunday. Oh, and did I express my gratitude for those who serve here, for those who edit and those who record and for those who usher and those who give and those who live as sanctuary people and safe places and those who make sure that they pray for others as you serve, serving out of love. No wonder when the time comes and even Jesus, he served as he stooped down and he tied an apron around his, uh, his loins and he, as he washed the feet of his disciple and as he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciple and as he poured the cup after blessing, he gave it. Notice that Jesus is doing the serving. We are called to serve. And as we serve, we should serve because he loves us. Songwriter put it this way, oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love him because he first loved me. 
the hymn of service, the rhythm of service, comes with the beat of love. And she, I should say, and we began to serve. The service and the word of table three in our hymnal for this first Sunday in the month of February. The Lord be with you and also with others. Lift, him, lift up your hearts. Let us lift up our hearts to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give thanks and praise to the Lord. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth is full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Therefore, as often as we take of these, the elements as we pray thy blessings. O oh Lord, hear our prayers as we come before you at this time that you may bless these elements. Lord, hear our prayers as you will teach us how to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, teach us how to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us take the elements where you are, the bread, the body of Christ broken for you. And in remembering this as Christians too, at times we shall be broken for we are the body of Christ. But with the hope he has poured out himself for us. So the cup, after he had blessed it also, he gave it to his disciples and said, drink. For this is my blood of the New Testament, the promise. Therefore, so often as you partake of this, do so in remembrance of Jesus Christ until he comes and the final victory. Amen.
closing. A pastor of the church who used to make this say, we have come in to worship. Now we go out to serve. Benediction. Gracious Father, now bless us as we have come. So as we go forth to serve, others too may come in for the service that they may be equipped, encouraged, so, so that they too may go out to serve. In Jesus we pray, amen.